Hey guys, welcome back to Moto Monday. It's the first Moto Monday and the first video that I have out this year in 2023, and I want to welcome you to 2023. You made it. We're all still alive and kicking, so that's a plus. I hope you guys have some awesome New Year's resolutions and uh, hopefully you achieve your goals this year. With that said, let's dive into this Moto Monday's topic, which is going to be probably my hottest take of the year, and that is uh, based around the concept of special forces and how badass it is. Uh, or maybe the lack thereof. Um, so let's just kind of dive into this. So I had been seeing on you know on the internet among lots of videos, uh, people talking about training, and you know I'm I'm starting to offer my training this month, and it's built more around you know what the standard civilian would actually be training for, what they might use it for. Now, anytime I've commented or seen other people comment on some of these other training videos or people doing training or whatever the number one premise almost that always comes up is like, basically, if you're not a tier one operator, there's no way you could know what you're talking about, which is completely absurd and asinine considering there's huge portions of the SF community community that gets trained by fucking civilians that have no combat experience and no, you know, <laughs> background to really speak of when it comes to that, like training people in those, into those, into those roles. Right. So, the idea that someone's not special forces doesn't mean that it's, that they're incapable of having a good idea or having like a solid take on a tactic or a maneuver or what have you, right? Um, so, with that said, you know, it can kind of go back and forth as well, right? Like so, sometimes having combat experience or having that experience, I mean, it is always good to have that experience. You know, like not saying that going through it is always the most fun thing but it can better train you for the next time you're in that type of scenario, right? But people somehow just have this, to me personally, I think an over-glorified idea of what special forces means or what they are or the people in them, right? I've known personally a Navy SEAL who, you know, popped on the fucking drug test three times before they kicked him out. You know, the guy just couldn't stop doing drugs. You know, like every single sect and community has their fucking dirt bags, right? Like just because you're special forces doesn't mean you're automatically the most honorable person in the room. You know, it just doesn't like, you know, for example, like back in, I think it was 2019, there was like six Navy SEALs on trial for war crimes. You know what I mean? And then there was other, other uh, uh, units in the special forces that were being brought up on, on drug trafficking and all this other stuff. Like, <laughs> in fact, per capita, I would say that you're probably going to find even more negative things in special forces versus like your standard infantry. You know what I mean? And so I, just the whole idea of, you know, people being online and just thinking that like because some, a tier one operator or someone from the SF community says something that somehow that's just the, the Bible's truth and like the only doctrine you can listen to. You know what I mean? To me, it's just, it needs to like, People need to take a step back, especially in like the civilian community. If you're like online and you're looking at training videos and stuff, like understand and realize that that is just one person's take. It is just one person's version of how to do something. There's a nine million ways to skin a cat, right? And so you need to just find you need to find the right uh, version, and that has to do with like what you're training too. Like, why am I training? What am I using this training for? How am I going to use it? And is what this person's saying relative? Or are they offering training that's relative to what I'm going to be training to, right? So it's just something that I think that needs to like, there needs to be a different perspective in the community when people are looking at training or tactical training and how they view it and how it's being uh, interpreted and, and understand that there are plenty of people out there that have pl- great experience that were never special forces, right? Like, in fact, there are special forces, people in the special forces community that have never, for example, a dispatch, had to, dis- had to dispatch anybody. Like, there are, you know, like, just because you're special forces just means that you have more training, you have more assets, you have more support, you have the best technology that the, the government has to offer the military, and you have the best intel when you roll into your mission, Right? And you have typically much looser ROEs, uh, roles of engagement, when you go into those missions. So really, their job, in some ways, is much easier than like the standard infantry because the standard infantry will go out, 
like the Marine Corps, for example, will go out with hand-me-down guns from the Army, hand-me-down technology from the, from the Army, and, it, and they're expected to go out and do a similar job with less intel and, in some areas, much stricter ROEs, right? So, like, the job is actually more tough. And, it, and in, in some of the cases, depending on the mission of that Tier 1 unit or the SF unit, like, sometimes their, their mission is to go in and do, like, one specific thing and they're out. Like, you know what I mean? Where the mission of, like, the standard infantry could be boots on the deck for months and months and months at a time. Yes, I know that there are some SF units that, that, their, whole, that their whole mission is going out there and embedding with foreign fighters and training them up, and they're out there for a long time. I know that I, I know that it happens, but there, there's also the reverse that happens, right? So, like, there are there are infantrymen, standard infantrymen, that have way more combat experience than some SF dudes. That's just the way that it works. It depends on the deployment. It depends on where you, when when you go, where you go. You know, like, <laughs> there's just so many different factors. But to write people off, or write, write someone off just because they weren't SF is, it's crazy, right? Like, you should be able to, like, and even, even if they're not SF, or maybe even if they're not even military, they might have some new way of looking at something that is valid, and, and maybe they have no experience, you know what I mean? But maybe there's a good idea in there somewhere. But you have to be able to open up your mind and, and listen and accept it. There's other realities other than what some fucking SEAL or Ranger said. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or or Marsoc or whoever, the, where, wherever they come from in the Special Forces community. They have a specific bit of training that they use in a specific situation, and that's that. That's all that it is. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that that's the only way that you should do it, right? You know, that there's, there's arguments across the board for anything in a specific scenario. You know what I mean? like my last video about the whole C-Grip thing. When the, when the C-Grip was first started being used and people were like locking out their arms and stuff, again, I just disagree with it. Now, is it still, does it still perform a function that's maybe usable? Yeah, I just, it's my own take. It's my own opinion that I that I don't train to it. I, I use like a modified version of it where the elbow is bent and whatever, right? And just because, uh, like, you know, the guy who made it famous, Chris Costa, just because he wasn't special, like, because he didn't have, like, a ton of combat experience. People didn't take it that seriously. And so, like, there was this kind of weird dynamic of, like, if you didn't have combat experience, you know, then we couldn't listen to you. Or, you know, if you're not Special Forces, we can't listen to you. Or, you know, whatever the case is. But everyone listened to Chris Costa. And so it's like, I have the same people who are, like, arguing to me that, like, because people aren't Special Forces that and have tons of combat experience, like, you can't listen to them. But on the flip side, they're saying... Oh, Chris Costa is right, and the C grip is the best thing that's ever been <laughs> brought into like the two A world when it comes to shooting. It's like, well, that guy didn't have a lot of common experience, but you're willing to listen to him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just, uh, I think again, there's just this like over glorification of special forces. Don't get me wrong; they go through lots of extensive training. They get to do a lot of cool shit. They get, like I said, the best fucking gear, the highest you know, budget out there and they go out and they do some really hard missions. But that doesn't mean that they're the only ones that go out and do hard missions. They're not the only ones that see combat. They're not the only ones that get a ton of training. You know what I mean? Like, you just have to be willing to accept that there are, like, are people with other other ideas that are also good. So, I'm not going to go too much further into this, but I just want to let you guys know that it's okay if you guys are a... If you consider yourself an intermediate or advanced shooter, you can still go take a beginner course from someone with maybe no combat experience. They might have some different point of view you haven't seen before. You just don't know. You can learn something. You can always learn something. And even if it's just reinstilling those basic fundamentals, that's not, you know, that's, it's a good thing. And then there's also the, you know, not necessarily the negative, but I mean, there might be something in the course that you know that doesn't work for you and maybe you have to go through it again and you're just like reinstilling like, okay that for sure does not work so i can i can check that off the list you know so just keep that in mind keep training keep finding things and that work for you keep finding training that is developed around what you need to train to and understand that like especially especially this right the best shooters in the world are not in the military right some of the best shooters in the world are just civilians who shoot a lot 
right? So if you guys get a chance to go out there and do some competition shooting, I highly recommend it. Learn from those guys and girls. They are also great shooters. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Keep training. Keep fighting. I'll see you guys on Tactical Tuesday tomorrow. As always, stay loose, battle on, and if you bitch in your heart, it'll show. <laughs>